going on, UCLA fans? Uh, Coast here talking, recapping the UCLA football season. Uh, you know, what an ugly 6-8 and eight season it was. Uh, six wins. I know, losing record, whatever, but it was a disaster. Uh, this team was so painful to watch, with the exception of a game against Cal and Colorado. Every other game was painful to watch uh, when we won or lost. Uh, this team... A lot of mistakes. You know, it started off with horrible defense. I mean, yeah, Case Keenum put up a lot of yards, but if you watched the game, it was all because we couldn't tackle in the open field. Uh, the whole defense, it was a joke, uh, for the, with the exception of the bowl game and those two other wins. Uh, the defense couldn't do a thing. They couldn't get a stop for their lives. They, they could not tackle in the open field, could not get pressure uh it's very disappointing because you have a defensive line that had high expectations. Owagmo Bayo Digazua, Cassius Marsh, Nate Chandler, uh, Dayton Jones, those four were expected to be very good on the front front four, and I didn't see a whole lot. Makes me wonder why Bet Rector Field is still a coach for defensive line as he's the one retained. But the the secondary was streaky, you know, Sheldon Price had some few nice moments, Heron Hester did, but Overall, they were still horrible at giving up plays. The linebackers, you know, Larry Moore had a few nice moments here and there. Zumwalt, but <laughs> the defense was just allowing stuff in the open field. Any run to the left or right, it was horrible. It's horrible to watch. Uh, the secondary overall wasn't bad, but it definitely wasn't great. Once you play the quality team, uh, they were playing scared half the time. When you play against a good quarterback. Uh, you know, the special teams, uh, Josh Smith, I had higher expectations for him this year, but kick returns, I didn't see any big impact from him or on the punt returns. You know, Taylor Embry botches the ball a couple times this year. That was painful. And then the kicker, uh, we've been spoiled by Justin Medlock and Kai Forbath in back-to-back -back tenures. Kip Smith gets injured. He, he wasn't even good when he was in, and then we're stuck with uh, Jeff Locke doing field goals, looked good at first, but Locke was missing PATs, and then... We're stuck with a walk-on in Tyler Gonzalez, who did all right. Uh, in his defense, Gonzalez was all right for the expectations he had. Uh, went too mad there. Sure, it, it sucked. We couldn't kick field goals as much as we want to, depend on a 40-yard field goal. But it wasn't as bad as, uh, as, as, as it could have been. The, on offense, it was also, uh, you know, the offensive line had its messes. The, a lot of these guys were ineligible or injured. This team can never be healthy. It, it's just the proven fact. Uh, receivers, you know, there's talent. There's a lot of nice talent that New Highs are recruited, but, it's, you know, coaching. A lot of coaching was poor. A lot of penalties on third down. I think we had the worst third down defense in the nation, one of the worst. Uh, yeah, the penalties were pretty dumb. Uh, I said painful to watch. Uh, the running game, you know, you had some nice stats, but that's because we're running a pistol and the team can, a pistol will inflate the, the running stats a little bit. You know, Franklin... You know, he still fumbled the game more. Sorry, fumbled the ball. Uh, had that fumble issue he had last year. It's nice to know he's returning to school. Uh, Eric Coleman, I, I wish we used him a lot more, and we didn't. But Coleman was the one bright spot on our offense. And uh, he, a happy graduation to him. I hope he gets a job in the NFL somewhere. Not sure about that, but <laughs> he's a hell of a player. And uh, the one running back I think fans can admire for this four-year of uh, service with the UCLA football team. Uh, for the quarterback, you know, Kevin Prince, uh, it was, you know, I don't know why the coaches put him in when he's hurt, all right? He has to be 100% healthy in order for him to play in. You know, that game against Texas, he's playing on 60%, and we're still putting him in. No excuses. There's no excuses by the coaching staff to put this much faith in Prince when he's been streaking left and right and messing up. Uh, you know, there were times that we've made other teams look a lot better than, than they really are on us. That Arizona, for example. They've, the way they spanked us in Tucson was, was embarrassing, an abomination. Uh, you know, we were lucky to play Oregon State and Washington State when it came to the North Division teams. We won them both. Uh, you know, we did win that one road game in Oregon State who struggled as well. But as like I said, this team was painful to watch. Defensively, it's been hard to be optimistic. Offensively, this you know there were some of these close games that we did win. Kind of got lucky, you know. Arizona State, the refs almost tried to give Arizona State the game. Lucky there was a missed field goal, but the defense all season, with the exception of a few games, the defense was atrocious and it needs a lot of fixings. 
Uh, New Hines, you know, there's a lot of talent. It wouldn't surprise me if a proper coach who, who knows how to coach can bring up these players and actually make them look better than what they are right now. But a lot of disappointment. The, the defense was supposed to be the strength before the season, and the offense was supposed to be kind of iffy, but it was kind of the opposite. The offense was okay, there was streakiness, but the defense was a mess. It was a mess, and uh, it was it was disgusting to watch half the time. Uh <laughs> Uh, going on, you know, new new coach Jim Mora. You know, we'll see what he does. I it's hard to put faith in him because of who, the, with Dan Guerrero being Dan Guerrero. You know, he put all his stock on Chris Peterson. He failed. He has no plan B after that because everybody else was hired. So, <laughs> Jim Mora Jr. He's got a nice recruiting staff. I like, you know, I think Adrian Clem. They got, I think, a guy from Washington coaching the secondary. You got got a nice lot of nice recruiters, but. Are we going to have coaches that can actually coach, not just recruit? That's the part of the battle, and I need to see it on the field. I like the things that Jim Moore Jr. has said to the press conference, and you know, talks about goals. You know, he said the right things. He didn't predict anything like Rex Ryan would or make bold predictions. But you got to let the actions show, and we need to see discipline as well because this team. I know we took away the off the wall or the jumping over the wall tradition, but there needs to be discipline. This team is so so dumb. And it's an embarrassment uh, how bad this team is when it comes to fundamental football. They don't know how to tackle. They commit dumb penalties. They're they're making mistakes. The receivers who are supposed to be good are dropping the ball. Uh, you know the one with positive. You know Rosario had a few had some nice stats, but even he messed up at times that were uh, annoying. Uh, Joseph Farier was the only positive to the uh, receiving core, but other than that, the receivers were struggling. Uh, yeah, they're gonna. It's gonna be a lot of coaching. They're gonna have to coach up these guys, and I'm not gonna need to see it to believe it uh, right now. UCLA football, it's and UCLA athletics for the most part has been a mess. Uh, so, you know, I'll leave it at that. You know, the recruiting, recruiting's coming in all right. I like what I'm seeing there, but I gotta see coach development. And I know I've said that all pretty much in every one of my videos. Uh, National Sign-On Day will come in about a month. You know, I'll talk about UCLA football there. Uh, you know, got a few other notes, you know, athletic-wise. The soccer team and the men's water polo team, along with the women's volleyball team, all made the Final Four. Uh, I think the water polo made the finals and lost, but the women's volleyball team won their first title, first ever NCAA title in like 20 years. So uh, congrats on title number 108 for the school. It's good to see that will be recognized on, in Poly Pavilion's uh, banner when it comes. Uh, yeah, the basketball team is right now still a mess. Uh, yeah, they're better than what they were, but they're still still got ways to go. They look like an NIT team right now. NIT team right now, excuse me. Uh, so, I'll talk about basketball season. Try to do it every weekend once I get back to school in a couple weeks. So, until I'm able to watch games, you won't see me talking on this channel too much. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to watch games when I get back to school each weekend to talk about the basketball team. But. This is about it for football. We're, there's going to need to be fixes everywhere. And maybe Brent Hundley will come in at quarterback. Well, maybe we'll see some of these recruits that, that New Heisel left. Because we got a lot of nice recruits, got a lot of talent, but it's not showing on the field. Uh, there's not development and not discipline. So we'll see what, see what happens, guys. Because I've, I've been disappointed at our defense all year, and it's been frustrating. So let me know what you guys think. We'll see you guys later, and go Bruins.